Hey YouTube, it's Roman. Today I want to talk about my top five Python tricks, concepts, tools, whatever you want to call it, uh, in five minutes. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, now these are in no particular order, but number one is going to be slice notation. So slice notation means that we can refer to any index of, say, a string, a list, maybe a pandas series, a data frame, uh, using brackets and a start and an end index. So if I wanted to, say, get the first three characters of this string, slice notation is awesome. I could just do X with some brackets. I can start at index zero or specify nothing to also start at zero and then go to three and that will return the first three letters of that string. Similarly, I have a vector here Y that is of the length 100 and we can actually print this out here in the console. If I wanted to get the back 50 elements of this particular vector, then I can just do Y open brackets and then start at minus 50 and then take everything else after. And that will return to me the last 50 elements in that vector. So that is number one, slice notation. Coming in at number two is going to be splitting strings. Now this is something that I use pretty much all the time, especially when working with files and file paths. And perhaps I have a giant set of file paths that I'm trying to work with. This is something that I use all the time. So what we can do is we can say X dot split, and then we can choose how we wanna split up this particular string. So I wanna split it up by spaces. Then if we run this, you can see it's gonna return a list of strings, each with the word that is separated by a space in the original string. Splitting strings is awesome, especially with slice notation. So combining number one and number two, now let's take a look at this file string here. If I call file.split and I split by the slash, you can see it's going to return a list of all of those strings based on that file path. And if I wanted to actually get the file itself with its extension, then what I can do is add the slice notation and call minus one, and that's gonna return to me the file with this extension. So number two is splitting strings and works great when combining with number one. Number three is going to be data frame queries using pandas, and I can't even express how often I use this feature. So what we have here is a data frame, and I have one column, which is the standard normal distribution samples, where each observation is a random sample from a standard normal distribution. Now, theoretically, 50% of the values will be over zero and 50% will be under zero based on the standard normal distribution from statistics. But if we wanted to actually check to see how many values were greater than zero, we can do a query by saying data frame and then opening a set of brackets, then calling that same data frame, referencing the standard normal distribution samples column, and then checking where it's greater than zero. And that is going to return all of the samples that are greater than zero. Then we can check the length of this guy and see what the length of it is compared to its theoretical length. And we have 10,000 samples and 5,173 are greater than zero. So as we sample more, that's gonna to converge to the theoretical value. Uh, and this is my number three Python trick. Number four is going to be optimization. Now, optimization is an enormous topic in data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence. Uh, and it's, it's definitely a must have in your toolbox. So what I have here is a cost function that we want to find the value for X that we can plug in to get the smallest possible output. So if I was to just call this cost function and provide an arbitrary X, let's say 10, you can see that the cost function returns 84. So we want to make that output as small as possible. Instead of guessing all day, we can actually use Python, SciPy, and least squares to do this. Looking at the cost function itself, it's very simple. We know if we plug in four to X squared, we're gonna get 16, thus the minimum, 16 minus 16 or zero. But say we didn't have a parameterization that we could intuitively plug into this cost function, maybe there are tons and tons of parameters like in a neural network, then what we can do is we can call least squares, provide the cost function, and then an initial guess, so in this case I'll put five, and you can see that it's going to output the total number of iterations that it took to find the minimum, and then we can actually get the minimum input parameter, in this case four, which matches our intuition. So number four is optimization. Last but certainly not least is serialization. So serialization is going to allow us to save an image of an object after it's been instantiated. So I just have a dummy class here called person. And what I'm gonna do is create an object of this class, P1 is equal to person. And then I'm going to give it the name Roman. And we can go ahead and save this object by saying with open. 
p1.pkl wb as f pickle dot dump and we're going to dump p1 as the file f after saving the file we're obviously going to want to load it so what we can do is we can say with open p1.pkl and then rb as f pickle dot load f and then we can assign this to a variable say p2 and then if we go ahead and do p2 dot name it should be roman and lo and behold we have roman so number five is serialization that's going to do it for my top five python tricks in five minutes thank you so much for watching if you have any comments or questions if you want to leave your favorite tips and tricks for python in the comments below please do if you have any specific questions you can always shoot me an email roman at uh, other than that, I'll see you in the next one.